Dr. Sri Ganesh uh, will be operating on a 45-year-old uh, female patient with a refractive error of uh, right eye minus 5.75 diopter sphere with minus 0.5 diopter cylinder at 173 degrees and left eye minus 5 diopter sphere with minus 0.5 diopter cylinder at 23 degrees. And the procedure again will be uh, relaxed mine. Uh, yeah, these are the topographic uh, maps of this patient. Next slide, please. Uh, over to the OT. Bharti Aramagiri. Good afternoon. This is Dr. Ganesh here. Am I audible? Open your eyes. Look up. Look up. I'm going to tape your eyelashes. Ah, good. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So, she's a 45-year-old female patient. About, and the right eye has about minus 5.75 with 0.5. Cylinder and the residual stromal thickness will be 300 microns. I'm using a 100 micron cap. And my technique is I do a, at 12 o'clock, I make a 2 mm incision. And now we are going to do the applanation, dot the eye. Dr. Sri Ganesh, can I? Yes. Uh, what methods you have taken, measures you have taken to see that the cyclo torsion is avoided in this? Because there is no Aris registration here. Yes, cyclo torsion, basically if you are doing very high cylinders or pure cylinders, you can mark the 0, 180 degrees. And if there is any rotation, you can compensate in the axis. Right now there is no cyclo torsion. But generally we have found that, I think even in most cases in the studies, they have found that it does not make much of a difference. But if it's a very high cylinder, it's a pure cylinder, then it's better to mark the 0, 180 degree. And once you are uh, docked, then the eye doesn't move, so there is no need for any dynamic cyclotorsion. It's only the static cyclotorsion. Green light kanata. I am docking now. Green light kadane nortare. Look at the green light. Okay. Ready. Okay, we are going to start the laser now. Please don't move. Hold still. Okay, we have started. It's going to take 33 seconds. Please relax. You're doing fine. The green light will disappear after some time. Don't move your eye. Hold steady. Good. 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 You're doing fine. Good. Good. You're doing fine. Okay, another 10 seconds. Okay, you're doing fine. Good, almost done. Okay, I make a single uh, side cut at 12 o'clock, 2 millimeters. That was the femtosecond. Once that is done, then we, once we move to the safe distance, then we just pull back the bed. You'll see a white light, Bharti. Just keep looking at the white light. Can alert speedy? Just hold still. So you can see that the patient is not fixating very well because she can't see the light. Once you just release the bubbles, then she will be able to see the light. Can you see the light on top? Ah, just keep looking at the light. Don't move. Hold very still. Okay, what I do is I go in, look down please, look at the light, light not light, ha, hange, hange. So it's very important that you find the right plane. So I just go above the lenticule, dissect a little, then actually find the plane there. And
See, that is the other plane underneath, okay? Then I dissect that. Then I go in with a spatula, okay, and enter light, light and orthari, kanna lats bedi, light and orthari, hold steady. Okay, that is, I am on the superficial aspect. You go in and then just do a dissection, okay, very gently. Okay, once I have dissected the upper layer, go in and enter into the deeper aspect, the undersurface of the lenticule, dissect it gen gently, and sweep across the other side, light and orthari. Most of the lenticule is free now, just a little bit there. Okay. Now it is free. I use this forceps from MST, which is actually a cannulated instrument. It is an excellent instrument. Go in and then find the lenticule, hold it, and then you just have to pull it out very gently. And that is the lenticule there, you can see. Okay. After that, you can either leave it dry. Or let me just focus it. Yes. I prefer to irrigate very gently. Go in so that it slightly hydrates the stroma. Then just the minimal manipulation and just express the fluid. And so that is... How I do this smile? You can see that she her epithelium is a little loose. So this technique is very good for loose epitheliums because you're not putting any pressure on the epithelium and unlike a flap, you're not causing much of epithelial trauma. So that is the 2 mm incision, 2 mm smile. And you can see that uh, the patient is very comfortable. Were you comfortable? Did you feel anything, Bharti? Okay, very good. Open your eyes. Open. Close. Open. Close. Open. Good. Excellent. So, the same procedure for the left eye. Does it show that excellent surgeon smile less? <laughs> the patient smiles more with an excellent surgeon. <laughs> so now I'm going to start to dock the eye. Just ask the patient to look at the green light on top and not to move the eye, hold steady. Can you see the green light, Bharti? Okay, don't move your head, don't move your eye, just relax completely. Once you're centered, you put on the suction. You can also use the infrared to check the centration. And now it's ready. Don't move your head. Don't move your eye. We're going to start the laser. 33 seconds. Good. You're doing fine. This is the first pass at the deeper level. Or the lenticule. The green light will disappear. Don't move. Don't search for it. You're doing fine. Just relax. This is the second pass from inside out where it's making the cap. Okay, another five seconds. Please relax. Almost done. And that is the 2 mm opening at 12 o'clock. It's a very light suction, so you have to be talking to the patient and see that they don't move the head or the eye. If they move the eye, there can be a suction loss. The green light disappears and sometimes there's a tendency to search for the green light. So this is something that you have to warn the patient not to search for the green light and hold their eyes steady. Okay. You'll see a white light on top. Please look at the white light. Of course, the microscope is excellent. This system also has an infrared where you can actually see the pupil and the centration. You just put it on for a few seconds. Look straight. Look straight up. Yeah, that's good. 
just release the bubbles and then ah, look at the light now look to your right slightly ah that's good so center it same technique look look at the light please very important look at the light look straight ah don't move your eyes you can see her epithelium is extremely fragile don't move your eyes look at the light look straight ahead ah be like that Okay. Find the second plane. It's very important. Look straight, please. Look down slightly. Ah, Hungary. Look down. Ah, no. ah, no, be like that. You go in. Just one sweep. Dissect. Actually, it's pretty fast. The dissection. Then go in deeper. Enter. Dissect. Look at the light. Look at the light, please. Okay, and then this little bit of the edge, I dissect. Now the lenticule is free. Free. I just go in. Hold the lenticule, and then see. Sometimes, if it is not separated fully, then if you pull it the way you do your excess, then it comes out very easily. You can see that is the lenticule. It has come out fully. Just go in and wash a little, very gentle. Look at the light, please, Bharti. Yes. Bharti is our staff, and she's been waiting for this to get rid of her glasses. She's our storekeeper. So, very happy to be doing this surgery on her so she can see her inventory is better now. And that's the. Okay, I just. Okay. That's the 2mm smile technique. You can see there is no flap. So we ask the patients uh, to go back to their activities after 48 hours. They can shower, splash water because that small 2mm epithelium has healed. They can even apply eye makeup because and take it off unlike LASIK. They can even go back to their sports. Open your eyes. Close. Open. Close. Excellent. I'll show you the other eye. The bubbles would have disappeared. Most of them immediately, if you check now, they have about 618 or 624 vision. By tomorrow, they have, most of them have 65 or 66 vision. You can see the bubbles have disappeared here. It's very clear. There is no subconjunctival hemorrhage. The eye looks like it's not being touched. Thank you. And, uh, did you hear the applause, doctor? Wonderful, wonderful technique, wonderful surgery. We enjoy it. Thank we'll you. Over to our next surgery, wherein you're going to put things into the corner. Yes, I will take some questions. Meanwhile, while uh, they prepare for the next, they shift the next uh, patient. The next patient how is. Does, how, does the, how does the you have uh, been operating uh, with Femto for a long time? Yes. How does the uh, the uh, technology in uh, the intralase differ from the technology used here? See, we have had the intralase from uh, four and a half years. And now I have uh, probably done more than 4,000 flaps with the intralase. And with the intralase... They start making appears to be very fast, very rapid. Yes. With the intralase, uh, the, it's a 60 uh, kilohertz uh, laser. This is a 500 kilohertz laser. So the amount of tissue, as the frequency increases, the energy reduces. So with intralase, we have to use a much higher energy. With the Visumax, we use a very low energy. It's almost... 120th of the energy we use with the uh, 60 kilohertz. So that way, the less uh, amount of energy, the less the collateral damage to the tissue, less the chances of uh, inflammation and DLK. And uh, uh, laser itself is very fast. 
And if you look at uh, the interlace per se, the suction which we apply, we have a very high suction with the syringe. It causes subconjunctival hemorrhage. For us, of course, it's not subconjunctival hemorrhage is not a big problem. We tell the patient it will go away. But for the patient, that's the biggest concern. They keep coming back even after a week and saying the eye is red, it doesn't look good and all that. So that is totally avoided here. The suction also is very powerful with the interlace and then uh, the light disappears. So there is some amount of vascular occlusion there and the patient is not able to see any fixation there, no fixation light on the interlace. Here there's a fixation light that the patient can see and even after the suction, the uh, fixation light is seen. Because it's a corneal suction, the goblet cells of the conjunctiva are not destroyed, unlike the other uh, types of suction where the goblet cells, there can be some amount of damage. This is also another reason uh, why you have less dry eye and the uh, ocular tear surface is uh, much better. What is the intraocular pressure when the suction is activated? This, uh, I think yeah. it's about 30 to 40 millimeters of uh, mercury. With the intralase, it, it is more than 60 millimeters, may go up till 80, 100 also. Uh, uh, is, is it possible to do this on uh, pseudophagic surprises, you know, refractive surprises after a cataract surgery? Yes. Pardon? Uh, would you be able to do the surgery? Yes, yes. Yes, you can, you can do the pay, uh, surgery much earlier on because you're not going to uh, put a lot of suction. So even with a clear corneal uh, incision after about three weeks, it should be fine to use the suction on the Visumax. But generally with the interlace, we wait for three months. Uh, what is the size of the cavitation bubbles in this uh, technology? The it's cavitation, the size, the size of the bubble, basically with all femtosecond laser, maybe about four to six microns, but uh, the other thing is with a 500 hertz laser, the amount of OBL, that is opaque bubble layer, is much lesser. With the interlace, what I used to see is we used to get a lot of OBL, opaque bubble layer, and it takes at least about 15, 20 minutes for it to clear. Here, OBL is not much, and even those small bubbles the, which are there clear in about 10 minutes. Is there any tendency for the technology uh, to be taken towards making smaller and smaller cavitation bubbles? Uh, cavitation bubbles, basically, again, you need that energy and uh, if you use more energy, then you can have uh, more cavitation, but the size of the uh, bubble and the plasma is uh, about the same. The, what you can do is you can change the spot and line spacing, what we call the spot and line spacing. You can make it tighter or bigger. With the interlace, it uses a raster pattern, but here it uses a spiral pattern. You, that is the difference in the pattern. And uh, depending upon the energy and uh, the technique, then you can actually reduce the spot and space sizing. So if you use a very low energy, your spot and spot spacing has to be closer. Like uh, here, I think it's about three microns with the Visum Max. With the interlace, uh, we keep uh, uh, eight, eight microns. Uh, spot and uh, line spacing so if you're going deep uh, if you're going deeper huh. do you need to change the spot and line separation for it or do you keep the same we keep it at the same uh, level because there's not much of difference if you're going uh, more superficial then the corneal stroma is more compact so it may be a little more difficult to uh, dissect but uh, generally i as a standard keep the cap at 100 microns with the interlace, I used to keep it at 90 microns. Here, I keep it at 100 microns. You can get a variation of 5 to 10 microns. Okay. Shikhanesh, is